Today's focus is going to be on the large intestine. So when you notice that you have tension in your upper traps, back of the shoulders, arms, you might actually have a blockage or imbalance in your large intestine. So when we actually release the fascia of the upper traps, back and shoulders, back of the arms, you're affecting that meridian line. So when it's out of balance, we can have issues like sluggish bowels, congested lungs, clogged bronchial passages, abdominal pain, intestinal cramping, all kinds of yucky stuff. <laughs> so when we are out of balance, we also can have emotional issues such as sadness and grief and worry. But when we get this large intestine in balance, we'll have energy, our digestive system will work better, we'll feel positive and happy and hopefully worry-free. So that's the plan for today. I hope you enjoy. About five minutes before we're going to officially get started, but I always like to kind of warm up my whole body. So if you're here early and you want to join me, you can just do some gentle, almost like a bouncing of the body. You don't even need to leave the ground. Notice I'm not even leaving the ground. I'm just kind of shaking up, bouncing my body around a little bit. I could give my hands a shake, just waking up the whole fascial system. A little bit of shaking up, waking up. Maybe shake the hands out. You could also roll your feet out if that's something you like to do with a regular ball or a spiky ball if you have one of those handy. Keep letting folks in. Good morning, good morning, everybody. And again, we'll get started in about four minutes. And until we get started, you're welcome to do some of this overall waking up of the body, shaking out. You can roll your feet. All of that will get your body ready to go. Woken up, fascia system, energized. Our focus today is going to be the large meridian line, which actually has a lot to do with upper trap tension, upper back tension, arm and neck, even into the face. So we're gonna be dressing a lot of that today. We have about three minutes before we'll officially be starting. And we're just gonna do what you need to do to get the body ready to rock and roll this morning. So we have Shaking of the body, rolling of the feet, if that's what you like to do with a regular ball or a spiky ball. Whenever you roll the feet, you're actually affecting the whole system from bottom to top. So that's another way to get the body ready to do the work that we're gonna be doing today. Which again, a lot of focus on the large meridian line, large intestine meridian line today. And when it's out of balance, it can wreak havoc on our digestive system. It also can affect the lungs, it can affect us emotionally. If it's out of balance, we can experience grief and worry and sorrow. So getting it in balance can be really beneficial in so many ways. We've got about two minutes before we officially start. But as I said, if you want to start doing some things that wake up the system, like rolling the feet or doing a little bouncing or shaking out the arms, you can certainly do that. Got about one minute before we start. Still letting folks in. You can roll your feet, shake it out starting at about one minute. All right, guys, so we are right at about seven o'clock. So 
We're gonna come down to your mat or your floor and have handy your Pilates ball. If you have a block, you'll grab that as well. And then your set of yoga tune-up balls inside their tote. So we're gonna start off focusing on the middle back, the thoracic spine. So this area right in here where pretty much everybody I know has tension in this area. If you sit a lot at a desk, it absolutely is an area that will get really tense. If you ride a bike a lot, we just tend to have a posture that's like this. We get really tight in this area. Stress can cause tension in this area too. When it is locked up, I can tell you, you're not gonna be able to take a deep breath. It's going to limit your range of motion in your shoulders because it's all attached. So getting this released is super important. So we'll start with your Pilates ball. It's the most gentle version of this opening. And then we might ramp our way up if it makes sense for you to something more intense like a block or your Pilates ball or your uh, yoga tune-up balls. So we'll start off with your ball right at about the bra line area. Now, some of you may need a lot of support behind your head. Some of you may need no support behind your head. We're going to start just laying over the ball. So having a pillow or maybe even a thin block or something like that may be what you need so that your head isn't super dangly. Okay, so we're going to start with just some breath work here. Laying over the ball. Okay. So get yourself situated. And again, for some of you, you may need a pillow or something under your head. Otherwise, it's too much of a stretch. So figure that one out and then settle in. Laying your arms alongside your body and starting to take some deep, deep breaths. So you'll notice my rear end is on the ground. You'll notice my head is on the ground. If my head is super dangly and not touching the ground, again, a pillow or a block or a blanket or a towel or something under your head will be helpful. Take a deep breath into your belly. Slowly let it go. Deep breath into your belly and slowly let it go. And a deep breath into your belly, into your ribs, all the way up into your chest. And really slowly let it go. So go ahead and clasp your hands behind your head and then squeeze your elbows towards each other. So your elbows will be pointed towards the ceiling and you'll lean over the ball and then come up. It almost seems like you're doing crunches and you might even feel your core muscles working a little bit. But the point of this is to feel some extension in your middle back as you go over the ball. And then you're moving through this range of motion where you come up and you come down. And if you're feeling your core muscles working, that's just a bonus for you. <laughs> All right, so we'll keep doing exactly this. My rear end's on the ground. Or if you feel like you want to transition to something a little bit more, you can take your block on its flattest setting or even a taller setting, place it in that same place, like bra line-ish area. And be careful if you're on the block and on a taller setting, it doesn't tip on you. And you can do the same thing. Remember, elbows are squeezed in on this one. They're not out. And then we lean over and come up. And lean over, inhale, and then come up, exhale. And lean it over. If you're still on the ball, that is also fantastic. Just keep doing what you're doing. And you can continue either on the ball or the block. A little bit more intense is going to be 
for most of us, your tune-up balls. And if you try that, just be careful, find the position that's okay for you. You won't get quite as much extension. However, these little balls, they can certainly dig in there. So really pay attention and see if this is appropriate for you. Lean it back. So we continue to move up and down three more times with your breath, inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale. All right, whatever you've chosen or you can switch back to something else, relax back down, either ball or block or your Pilates ball. And if you have a block under your, under your back, you may need support under your head. We're going to do a snow angel kind of movement with the arms. So arms extend and reach over the head and come back down and come over your head and come back down. Inhale, reach, exhale, back down. Inhale, it reaches, extend, and find the rain that's just okay in your shoulder. Don't push through anything sharp. Inhale, and exhale. And one more time, inhale, and exhale. Whatever you're on, carefully maybe roll to the side to come up off of it. And then you'll come to all fours, hands and knees. And from here, tuck your chin and really round out your upper back and lean a little forward to your stretching the area you just rolled or extended over. And then inhale, hold for a breath or two, lengthen, drop the chest, lengthen the chest forward. The next time we come back to the rounded position, walk both hands to the left, round out that upper back and lean a little forward. You'll get a little extra emphasis on the right side typically when you do this. Walk back to center. We'll take a moment and extend the spine again. Lift the chest, heart comes forward. Chin up, belly drops, chest drop. And then we'll walk both hands over to the right, round out that upper back again and lean a little forward, stretching out more of the left upper back and middle back. And release. Beautiful. All right, so we're going to actually do a little bit of breath work now, but before we do, I'm going to have you release a little bit of the pressure points on the face as well as your sinuses. So you can take your two piece fingers and place them right next to your nose and you're putting some pressure on there, but be careful. You're not trying to like bruise your face. So some pressure on there and then sliding along the bone to the temples and then bring it back right next to your nostrils again and then sliding out and pausing at your temples and again so press a little in down and up and one more time press and pausing at the temples. All right, so you're gonna release your left hand. You're gonna take your two piece fingers on your right hand and place them in between your eyebrows. Hover your right 
thumb over your right nostril and your right ring finger hovers over your left nostril. So you can watch or sometimes just listening to my words is the benefit is going to be most beneficial. So inhale through your nose, exhale through your nose. Close the right nostril with your thumb. Inhale through your left nostril. Close your left nostril with your ring finger. Release your right nostril, exhale. Sit as tall in your spine as you can. Inhale through the right nostril. Close the right nostril. Release the left. Exhale. Keep checking in with your tall spine. Inhale through the left. Close left. Release right, exhale. And you don't need to smash your nostril to do this. Inhale right. Close right. Release left, exhale. Inhale left. Gently close left, release right, exhale. Inhale right, close right, release left, exhale. If your arm gets tired, you can support it with your left hand. Inhale left, close left, exhale right. Inhale right. Close right, release left, exhale. We'll go two more rounds. Inhale left. Close left, release right, exhale. Inhale right. Close right, release left, exhale. We'll go one last round. Inhale left. Close left. Release right. Exhale. Inhale right. Close right. And release left. Exhale. And gently release your hands. Take a big breath in through your nose. And a long exhale through your nose. All right, beautiful work. All right, so we are going to move on to our trapezius upper traps. So you can take your balls out of their toad if they're in there. And we're going to be placing one ball on each side of your upper trapezius area. Our upper trapezius, it's not the neck. It's right here, that area that tends to hold a lot of tension right there for most of us. Again, it's not the shoulder either, upper back. So you'll get yourself situated either on the floor or sometimes the wall is a better option. If you're on the floor, go ahead and have a block nearby. You'll slip those balls underneath your upper trapezius area. So I've got them situated there and I'll show you what it looks like from this angle too. So for some of us, again, we might need a little thin pillow or something under our head if our head is not connecting to the earth. So once you have yourself situated there, and they might be a little wider, or a little narrower, depending on you, but they need to be tucked underneath there enough that you they're not gonna slip out. 
We'll start doing some movements and then you'll check in and see if you need to lift your hips and either dynamically hold them up or use a block. We'll do some of those snow angels again with the arms. So the arms move out to the sides and again, finding the range of motion that will work for you and your shoulders. So that might mean some of us, we don't go all the way back or maybe my arms are pretty close to the ground. Maybe yours are up higher. That's okay as well. Okay, if this is way too much, you can take your balls to the wall and do the same thing. Just lean it in and you'll do your same thing at the wall. Okay, if you're not feeling what you want to feel, you're not feeling enough, you might choose to slide a block underneath your tailbone. That just ends up dipping your body backwards. So you've got a little more pressure. Continue with those snow angels. And then clasp your hands above your chest, interlace your fingers, reach your fist towards the ceiling, and then start to reach your arms back behind you. And once again, you'll find the range of motion that is appropriate for you. You might pause with your arms back there for a breath or two. Your fist might hit the ground, it might not. And then some of you might choose to lift your hip up, just kind of squiggle side to side. So I kind of just have my elbows bent and they're kind of hovering above my chest and I'm squiggling my body side to side. So the balls actually roll side to side. So some of you that's gonna be too much. So you can do it with your hips closer to the ground or even on the ground. And of course, some of you might choose to do this at the wall you'll just roll side to side so the balls will travel across your traps trapezius side to side and then one last little option for you you could Clasp your hands back behind your head, support your head. Elbows can be in whatever position feels comfortable. And again, now I'm just kind of squiggling my upper body, dipping to the left, dipping to the right. And once again, just another way for you to move those balls across the tissue side to side. All right, we'll make our way off of your balls. You can set them off to the side. So we'll come back to all fours position. And you'll take your right hand first, open up the hand. You'll start with a rotation in the shoulder, the right thumb goes up towards the ceiling. When I can't move it back anymore, I'll rotate within my shoulder joint and start to reach back down. So I'm making a big circle. And again, your range of motion might be different than mine. It's slow. So when I can't go anymore, I rotate in the joint and I circle around. So what I'm not doing is leaning way over to give myself the range of motion. I'd rather you take the arm out wider if you need to, then compensate by leaning or squirming into a, another position of the body. So all fours rotate in the shoulder joint and circle around. 
Now make a fist with that same right hand and we'll do the same thing. It will feel different when you make a fist. It doesn't have to be a super clenched fist. So reach up, 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 up. Rotate in the joint and bring it around. And one more time, up, 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 and around. Now, you're going to end up with your right hand on the lower back with the palm up and open. From here, you'll start to bring yourself back in the direction of a child's pose. That doesn't work for everybody, so some of you might stay more on all fours. But if you're able to come into a child's pose, it's kind of nice. You can just put your head down on the back of your hand. Now you're going to let your right elbow get heavy. Be careful, you don't wanna get super aggressive about this. So right elbow aims towards the ground as you either stay in all fours or sit back into a child's pose. If you're not feeling much, you might need to walk your hand higher on your back, okay? So it might be right at the low back or it might be a little higher. So working the internal rotation of that shoulder. Now be careful, again, you're not trying to feel this to 100%, a 10 on a scale of one to 10. This can be pretty intense. So maybe a six or a seven in terms of intensity. If it's too much, you might need to move your hand down lower on your back or a little less effort to pull the elbow down towards the ground. Take two more big breaths in and out. And release your arm. Give it a little shake. And then we'll do the other side. So starting in that all fours position, my right hand is on the ground. My palm is open, my thumb starts pointing towards the ceiling, my left arm goes up, up, up. When I can't rotate it anymore, I rotate within the joint and circle it around. And we do it slow and rotate around. And we go up and around. And then make a fist. Again, it doesn't have to be a really aggressive fist, but you're making a fist with the hand. And continue with this range of motion. We take it up, 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 up. Rotate around. One more time. We go up and around. And then the hand lands once again on your back, palm up and open. And then whatever feels okay in the rest of your body, that left elbow gets heavy. You can sit back into a child's pose and put your head down, or maybe your knees don't like that. So you stay in all fours. This could also just be done standing or sitting, but the nice thing is gravity does some of it for you when you're in a position like this. So I don't even need to make an effort. Gravity is kind of pulling my left elbow towards the ground. If you're not feeling much, you might need to make a little more effort to bring the elbow towards the ground or walk your hand up your back a little bit more. Three more breaths. And gently release. All right. So we're going to take our yoga tune-up balls again. So we've definitely addressed the trapezius, upper trap area. When we started, we had a ball or a block or your tune-up balls down at the bra line, thoracic, lower thoracic spine area. We're now going to move into the shoulder blade area. So not up here, not way down here, 
but in the middle. So sometimes it's easiest to just go ahead and put those balls down on the ground and then situate myself on the balls. So right in the middle of the shoulder blades, this can be pretty intense again, guys. So if it's too much, you can go to the wall, okay? Or try adjusting the balls just a little bit up or just a little bit down. Some of you may once again need a pillow or something under your head if your head is super dangly. Some of you may need a block under your hips to get what you need from this. And then some snow angels. Once you've decided where you would like to be, something tolerable. Doesn't mean it's not going to be intense, guys but it's something that you can still breathe through. Remember, you could also place your balls at the wall, right at those shoulder blades. Same movements with those arms. Breathing, inhale, reach. Exhale, down. And clasp your hands above your chest reach those arms back behind you and back up over your chest. And then getting intuitive, maybe you lift your hips and do a little squiggling side to side. You can do a little bit of that at the wall as well. Maybe you leave your hips down, lift your head up and move a little side to side. Now, some of you may be okay with just rolling those balls up and down. This can be a lot. So don't worry if it's too much for you. It can be quite a lot if, it, if you wanna try it. But again, it's too much. You could go to the wall. And sometimes leaving your balls inside your tote when you're at the wall might be nice. So if you start to drop them, it's not two balls running opposite directions. <laughs> So that would look like this. I'd have the one set of balls in their tote and I would go up and down here like this. And again, I could do a little side to side movement. We'll take five more breaths, whether you're moving your arms, whether you're still, whether you're rolling up and down. Five more big breaths. Hmm. When you're done with your five breaths, we'll have you find a something like a yoga strap. It could be a belt, it could be a longish towel, it could be a jump rope. I sometimes say dog leash, although for some of you that might bring your dogs running and that might not be a good thing right now. <laughs> so for most of us, standing up is going to work best for this next one. So we'll take your strap fairly wide and you'll adjust accordingly. So it can be done sitting as long as you're able to keep a very tall spine. And for most of us, it's hard to not slouch when we sit. So I like to stand for this one. Now it's important that you don't jut your ribs out to compensate for any lack of range of motion in your shoulders. So we're gonna take your strap and keeping the ribs just as they are, the arms start to move back and forth. Now I have pretty flexible shoulders. So if your movement does not look like mine, don't be surprised. Maybe 
maybe you're stuck right here and that's okay. Eventually you might be able to go the full range of motion. Sometimes taking the strap a little wider will give you more access to the range of motion. So a little wider. At some point, you're gonna hit your head if you go too wide. So again, find the range where you're feeling, what we wanna do is feel. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Feeling a stretch in those shoulders. The arms can be straight for some. They can be a little bent for some of these ranges of motion. Maybe you go over your head straight and then pause for a moment with bent elbows and get a nice opening across the chest and shoulders. Remember, pull the ribs back. We're not jutting out. Pull those ribs back. So the movement is in the shoulder joint. And breathe. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale and exhale. And one more time, inhale and exhale. Beautiful. All right. So again, could be done sitting or standing, but if you're not able to keep a tall spine for this one, set your strap down, um, then I recommend standing. So you're going to slide your left hand behind your back, and that encourages this left shoulder to stay down. And then I'm going to lean my right ear towards my right shoulder, take my hand on the side of my head, relax this right shoulder, don't crunch it up. And I'm not pulling with all of my might. I'm putting mostly just the weight of my hand and maybe a little more than that. Lengthening out the side of the neck on the left side. Breathing into that. Again, relax your right shoulder. Be careful you don't start crunching the right shoulder up. Slowly release. Now my nose is going to aim towards my right armpit. And I'm going to take my right hand on the back of my head. Again, mostly just the weight of my hand and maybe a little bit of effort. And we lift up. Switch hands, right hand goes behind the back. That encourages this softening of that right shoulder. Left ear to left shoulder. Just the weight of my hand plus a little bit of effort. Soften your left shoulder. Deep breath in long breath out. Full breath in and a long breath out. And gently lift up, nose towards left armpit. And again, just the weight of the hand and a little more. Should be feeling something on the back side of my right side of my neck. Breathing in and out. If there's anything sharp or pinchy, back it off a little bit or just the angle of the head just a bit. Gently lifting up. All right, so Palms open, reaching both hands towards the ground, rolling those shoulders back. Again, my chest is open, but not because I'm jutting my ribs out. I'm opening up. So I'm like trying to pull my arms down towards the ground and back. Slow, rotate the head all the way around. Now, if you feel any pinching in the back, just a teeny, teeny shrug of the shoulders to create a little pillow as you go to the back. 
When you go to the back, the idea is to stretch the front, not pinch the back. So pay attention to that. So we're going slowly all in one direction. So keep going in the same circular direction. I'm going clockwise right now to the right and circling around. Slow. And then continue, but make fists with your hands. It'll feel a little different for some of us when you make a fist. One more time around. And then open the hands up again, re-reach and go the other direction. Slow. Remember if it pinches in the back, just a teeny shrug to create a little pillow for your head. You wanna stretch the front of your neck when your head goes back. So slow. And then make a fist with your hands and continue. Know that you're doing a lot of amazing work to balance out your large intestine meridian line, which will help your whole digestive system, your lungs, will help your emotional being. <laughs> we'll go ahead and come back down to the floor now. So you're going to take one of your balls, and now we are going to actually affect the back of the shoulder. So we did the trapezius. Later on, we're gonna do the actual neck. We've done the shoulder blades. We've done lower than that, more of the bra line area. Now, the back of the actual shoulder. For some of us, laying on your back is going to be enough and we can move through some ranges of motion here. So get yourself situated there. Now, if that is not enough, some of us might need to lay more on the right side and maybe even put a block underneath your head for some support. Or you might be somewhere in between. Here's me totally on my back. Here's me completely on my side. That ball is still on the back of my shoulder. Here's me sort of in between those two. So I'm kind of leaning on my right hip, but I'm not completely on my right side. So once I choose whatever I've chosen, and if your head is dangly, please support it with a block or a pillow. You can start to move your arm. It's kind of like a snow angel again. You can make some circles. You can keep the arm straight or bent. You can do some internal and external rotation with a bent elbow. This reminds me of the little waving kitty cat when you go to a Chinese restaurant. So the arm just goes internal and external rotation. And again, you choose, maybe you're completely on your back, maybe you're completely on your side, or maybe you're in between those two. You'll do the one that's appropriate for you. And I'm making some, I'm, my elbows on the ground. I'm making some circles with my, my lower part of my arm. That might be what I need. I could do some snow angel kind of movements. I could kind of even squiggle back and forth, rolling side to side, so just really being intuitive here. Everybody's different on this one, especially if you have any shoulder issues going on. This one can 
can be pretty intense. So do what is appropriate for you. I have five more breaths on this side. Now, if you'd like, before we transition to the second side, you can get a little bit of your tricep. And I just kind of lean in here. You could do it with a single ball. You could actually do it if you still had it. If you have two sets of balls, you could put the ball underneath inside the toe. So I'm getting the back of my arm, just kind of leaning into it here. This of course could all be done at the wall. If that shoulder work was too much, you could take that ball to the wall. You could do your triceps at the wall as well. So if you didn't do that this time, keep that in mind for next time. I could come to the wall and do all of this, the back of my shoulder, internal, external rotation, moving my arm, moving side to side. And again, I could do my triceps, that's the back of my arm on the wall or on the floor. It could be inside the tote or a single ball also works. So another breath, deep breath in. Deep breath out and we'll start to make it to side number two. So remember your options on your back completely. Remember you have the wall as an option too. On your back and kind of test the waters there. How does that feel? I could come, oops, there went my ball. I could come on my side completely and I like a block or a pillow or something under my head. If I'm completely on my side or in between, I'm just leaning a little bit to the left now. Internal, external rotation of the arm, like the little waving kitty cat. You could do some circles, some snow angels, and yes, to go to the wall. Doing all of this at the wall also is an option. You can move your body around, back and forth on there. Eventually, you might start to tap into the back of the arm and get the triceps a bit. It's all connected, guys. So sometimes tension in the triceps can cause irritation in the shoulder or elbows. All of this again, large intestine meridian line. So you're helping. Your lungs function better. You're helping your digestive system function better. You're helping your emotional state, bringing joy into your life by getting some balance in this meridian line. So no rush, if you feel like you need more time, you can take it, otherwise we will move on. So those of you ready, we'll go ahead and set your ball off to the side. And we'll start to stretch and release that same area. So starting on all fours once again. And begin to reach your right arm up towards the ceiling, spin open from your rib cage and then slide your right arm under and across. Now you'll lay completely on your arm. I like to support my head with my other hand. So we'll stay here for a few breaths and then we might create a little bit more intensity by laying down deeper or laying completely on the arm with straight legs. So I'll talk you through that in a moment. So take another breath or two right here on the knees.
So you could increase the intensity a bit by bringing your hips lower. So I'm like in a child's pose kind of position with my hips now. Or you could completely lay on top of your arm with straight legs. Be careful you don't spin away though from the stretch. You still need to spin chest towards the earth. So you're stretching the back of the arm. If it's pinchy at all on the inside by your chest, you may need to adjust your arm up or down to create a situation where it's mostly the back of your right arm and even maybe into that shoulder blade area. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. One more big breath. And very carefully start to make your way out. And we're on to side number two. So left arm reaches towards the ceiling, spin open towards the sky with your rib cage, slide your left arm under and across. We'll start here on the knees and feeling the back of the shoulder on the left side, releasing, opening a few breaths here. And then we might transition into something more intense. We might not, you'll have to see what feels best in your body. You can stay right here, or maybe hips towards heels is what you need, or lay right on top of that arm. And remember, it shouldn't be pinching on the inside, so if you need to adjust that left arm higher or lower, please do. And continuing to breathe deeply in and out of the nose if possible. You guys look good. Two more big breaths in and out. All right, very slowly coming out of that. All right, so we're going to, um, if your balls are out of their tote, go ahead and put them back in. And the block is nice for this one. We're gonna do a neck release. So whatever balls you have, you'll place them on top of your block. If you don't have a block, you can place them in your hands and hold them at the back of the neck when we lay down, just like this, okay? But if you have a block, you'll place them on top of the block and then you'll make your way down so that the balls are somewhere between where your neck actually meets your skull or even right in the middle of the neck. So you'll kind of figure out where it feels appropriate for you. Or you can spend some time in any part of your neck. Nothing causing pinging or pain or numbness. So check in with that. Once you have yourself situated, make sure it's not the block that's digging into your neck, it's the balls. And then you can start to do some movements with your head, yes and no. You could do some circles. If your balls are all the way at the base of your skull, you could simply just stay here and let traction happen. You'll notice my chin is tucked towards my chest because the balls are pulling the back of my head up. So I'm getting a bit of traction on my neck. So 
So once again, intuitively moving or being still, breathing deeply. Five more breaths. If you want to move the balls to a slightly different location on your neck, you can absolutely do that. Deep breaths in, long breaths out. We'll slowly make our way off of the balls. This can be done sitting or standing. So we're going to take our right hand to the collarbone, right below the collarbone. If you can actually attach your hand to your skin, it will work a little better. If not, just do the best you can. I'm pulling down on that skin and then I'll place my right hand on top of the left hand. So I'm creating a lot of traction of this skin. And then I'm going to bring my head in the opposite direction. So I'm stretching the front part of my neck here. So I'm going to bring my head on a diagonal and then just some small movement. So you'll notice my ear is mostly aiming towards my left shoulder, but I might turn my nose a little bit more to the left and then a little bit more towards the ceiling. Again, really checking in. What you want to feel is something here, not pinching on the opposite side. So do only the amount of range of motion that is creating a stretch on the front side of the right side of your neck. Breathing. And let's switch sides. So I'm taking my left hand to the skin below my collarbone on, I mean, right, right hand on the left side. My left hand covers that one up. I tug down and then I start to move my head in the opposite direction and I'll figure out the range of motion that seems appropriate for my neck. You want to mostly be feeling this left side of the front of the neck. So for most of us, this area gets really tight from sitting a lot, looking at phones, computers, TVs. Even sitting in the car, we tend to sit with our heads super forward, which tightens all of this up. Just a couple more deep breaths in and out. All right, we've got one last little release for you. So you're going to find your way onto your right side. I like a block under my head and I like a block between my thighs or a pillow or something like that. You could use your ball, something supporting between the thighs and something supporting the head. Okay, so I'm on my right side, I'm bringing my knees way up in line with my hips. Okay, so they're not down here, they're up in line with my hips. I got my right arm extended out to the right. I'm going to take my left arm and make half circles or maybe a little more than that over my head. I'm reaching to the left 
and then I'm coming all the way back around. So it's a little more than a half circle. So I'm coming towards my thighs, up and around and towards my glutes and up and around, back towards my thighs, inhaling up and around, exhaling, bring it back. Inhale, bring it up and around. And exhale, we bring it back. One more time. Inhale it up and around. And exhale, we bring it back. And taking your time, we'll come to side number two. Get onto your left side. Same setup. Head supported. Something between your thighs can be really nice. Left arm out. And the right arm circles up and around. Inhale. Exhale. Bring it back. And inhale up and around. And exhale, bring it back. And we inhale up and around. And bring it back. Inhale up. Around. And just one more time, we bring it up, breathe in. And we bring it back, breathe out. Beautiful work. And set your blocks and things off to the side. Come on to your back. Seem like you can give yourself one more big squeeze into the chest with your thighs. That feels good for you on your back. Eventually, you'll make your way into Shavasana. Legs can be extended or they can be bent, whatever feels best in your body. Allow your arms to lay alongside your body wide and open, palms to the sky. Take a deep breath in. And this time, open your mouth and let it all go. And rest. Letting everything go, any intentions you set earlier, let it go, and the breath go. Letting everything go. As always, if you have time, you're more than welcome to stay in your Shavasana as long as you'd like. If you're ready to move on with your day or you have to move on with your day, go ahead and start to reawaken gently, slowly moving small muscles first, fingers, wrists, ankles, toes, and eventually making your way up to sit. Bringing your hands to your heart center. Gentle bow of the head. Taking a moment of gratitude for this body, for this life, for this practice. Bringing your thumbs to your third eye. 
the divine light in me honors and sees the divine light in all of you. Namaste. Have an amazing day. Bye, guys.